I was actually emailed by some number file viewers, Yong Zheng Yu and Gokul Rajiv. They've been doing a project about cutting your fingernails and they sent it to me and there was some pretty cool maths in there, which I've sort of developed. I thought it'd be nice to talk about. What we're gonna talk about here is what happens when you cut them with a pair of scissors. You know, you might, right. <laughs> is this gonna freak you out now? Yeah. So I'm gonna cut like that. So I cut from the bottom there and I, you, you probably would try to cut to the top. Oh, right. And then you would do another one like that. Right. And then, and then I would cut across the top like that, and then oh. you'd, ca you'd carry on going, right, till you get a nice smooth thing, right? Oh, that's gross. <laughs> I don't know where they went flying off to. <laughs> Let's draw a picture of our fingernail. So we'll draw it as a semicircle. Imagine it's got radius one. So the first cut, well, we cut out a triangle, right? This is a 45 degree angle. So next cut, so you don't want a big pointy fingernail. Like cut across the top in, in such a way that each new side that we create, they're all the same length. Do that again, we do another cut. The idea being that we've now got four sides and that these are all the same length. And of course, if I do this enough times, it's gonna start looking like an arc of a circle. Okay, and that's your goal. That's where you wanna end up at, right? Because you don't want like weird... Yeah, you don't want ramp. stabby fingers, nails, right? You want nice, smooth, beautiful fingernails. So uh, you want to reach a circle. So we do that by doing successive polygons, essentially. So you could carry on with this ad infinitum. Now, assuming you've got an infinite amount of time. After 100 cuts, it's going to definitely look like a circle, okay? Now, the question is, how big is this circle? Because we never cut at this point again after the first cut, these angles here are still going to be 45 degrees. And that's very important. That tells us a lot. So I'm now going to draw a line there, which is a right angle to this new circle that I've created here. And I'm going to do another one coming from this point on the circle again at right angles. Now, what does this tell me? Because this is hitting the tangent to the circle at right angle, this is actually a radius of the new circle. So I can kind of complete the new circle. The other thing I noticed, this point here, whilst it's also the center of the big circle, it's also the bottom of the top circle. That's because of something that you know about circles, is that if you take two points diametrically opposite and you connect them via any point on the circumference, they will meet at 90 degrees. So you know the picture now. From this, we can very easily work out how much we've cut off. Our original circle had radius of one. A little bit of Pythagoras tells you that this line here is root two. Yep. From there to there is root two. From there to there is one. So from there to there is root two minus one. So now we can compare the ratio between the size of our nail before to the size of the nail afterwards. The sort of height before, which I'll call h before, over h after. h before was one. h after is root two minus one. And it's not too difficult to show that this is the same as root two plus one. Well, big deal. What's so good about that? By cutting my fingernails, so, so the, the, the rank one I had before was bigger than the one I have after by a factor of the silver ratio. That's what, so the silver ratio is there. Okay, so what is the silver ratio? You know about the golden ratio, right? So the golden ratio, you think about with the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, that's one way of understanding where the golden ratio comes from. So you start off with zero and one, and then you add these two together and you get one, and then you add these two together and you get two, you add these two together, you get three, these two together, you get five, carry on like that. That gives you the Fibonacci sequence. The ratio between terms in this Fibonacci sequence tends towards the golden ratio. So the silver ratio is slightly different. So you start off at the same point, zero and one. You double this and you add that, it gives us two. Double this and add that. So that's now four plus one is five. Double this and add that, so that's 12. Double this and add that, that's gonna give me 29. And I carry on like that with that pattern. If I wanted to write down what that pattern is, it's like this, it's Pn is two, Pn minus one plus Pn minus two. So in other words, I take the one before, I double it and then I add the one before that. You can see this ratio between consecutive ones will tend to the silver ratio. So you do it the same way as you derive the golden ratio. So I just take this expression here and I divide through by Pn minus one. So that gives me Pn divided by Pn minus one is two plus Pn minus two over Pn minus one. So at large n, this ratio becomes what I'm gonna call delta S. This is two, and this is one over the ratio. So that's one over delta S. And if you solve that equation, you get root two plus one. Okay, so that's the silver ratio. So there is an entire family of these guys and they're called the metallic ratios. This is the Pell sequence. Actually, there's some fun facts about this. If the Pell number is prime, its index is prime. Okay. Like its position. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Its position is prime. We'll call this P2. Okay, so this is the second Pell number. We don't count zero. We're not counting zero. We'll call this one P3. 
Okay, so you can see that this is prime and this is prime. This is prime and this is prime. This one here is also a prime number, and yet, surprise, surprise, it's the fifth Pell number, which is also prime. So it has this cool property that if the Pell number is prime, its index is prime. The other weird property of this sequence is it contains very few powers of anything. So by that I mean, you know, does it contain squares or cubes or fourth powers? Well, very few. Actually, the only ones it contains in the sequence are 0, 1, which is obviously a power, 169 is in there, okay, which is obviously 13 squared. There are no others. There are no fourth powers, there are no other squares, there are no other 26th powers, nothing, that's it. This Pell sequence gives you the silver ratio. There are, of course, generalizations of this that give you the other metallic ratio, so you've got the three Bonacci sequence. This is 0, 1, 3, 10, 33, 109. How's that work? You've you got to start off with these two. You take this one, multiply it by three, and add this. Take this one, multiply it by three, and add this. Take this one, multiply it by three, and add this. Right? And you go on like that. So the, is the Fibonacci sequence multiplying by one and adding the one yes, before? Yes, yes. And all the other metallic ratios come from multiplying by a different number and then I adding thought, the one I thought it seemed arbitrary, but I hadn't thought of the Fibonacci sequence as fitting this, but it does fit it. In yeah, a absolutely, way. absolutely. So in general, you can think about sort of n Bonacci sequence, which would have the rule Pn is n Pn minus 1 plus Pn minus 2. So you take one of the numbers, you multiply it by n, you add the one before that, that gives you your new number. So this one gives you the bronze ratio. n equals 4, n equals 5, they don't actually really have names, uh, so I think some people call it copper, nickel, but I think we're free to call them what we like, actually. <laughs> um, so the bronze ratio, which we'll call delta B, with the limit of the ratio of these terms, that's uh, 3 plus root 13 over 2, okay, <laughs> right, which is roughly 3.30. Very arbitrary. Yeah, but they're not, right, because then you can think about what you get from the nth one. Okay, the nth one, the ratio that you would associate with that, I'll call it delta n, and that is n plus the square root of n squared plus 4 over 2. And you get that just by applying the same method as we did for the silver ratio here. Everything you think about the golden ratio will generally have an analogue here. So you can talk about golden rectangles, you can talk about silver rectangles, bronze rectangles, you can talk about golden spirals, you can talk about silver spirals, bronze spirals. So, you know, so what are their properties? Okay, so we probably need some more brown paper actually, Brady. So the golden rectangle is the following. So you take a rectangle, okay, and its sides have the ratio of the golden ratio. So if this one's got length one, this one will have length the golden ratio, which is one plus root five over two, right? Is but, that not truly golden? I, I really suspect it's not. Uh, it's not even a rectangle. Look at the state. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. If this were really a golden rectangle, what property would it have? If I remove the largest square, then what's left over would be another golden rectangle. Basically, one over five minus one is actually equal to five. What's the silver version of this? You draw a rectangle whose sides have ratio given by the silver ratio. We remove two large squares, both of side one, and what we have left over is going to be another silver rectangle. If you did it with the rectangle whose sides were in the bronze ratio, you'd have to remove three, three, and then you'd get one left over, which was another bronze rectangle. In England, of course, we have A4 paper. Now, you may know something about A4 paper. The, the ratio between the lengths of the sides is root two. If this is one, this would be root two. This is another kind of rectangle, actually. Another kind of interesting one. It's not just A4. This is sometimes also called a silver rectangle. But it's not our silver rectangle, so we're not going to call it a silver rectangle, because some people would call uh, root 2 the silver ratio. Actually, we're going to call it the Japanese ratio, because it is big in Japan, this ratio, this, this root 2, and these, what I'm now going to call a Japanese rectangle. You know, lots of Japanese architecture uses this particular ratio and these particular rectangles. You also see it in Roman altars, all these sorts of things. But we're interested in the real silver ratio, so how would you create it from this guy? You would just remove the largest square. Kind of appropriate, this feels like origami and, you know, we're talking about a Japanese rectangle. So this would be the largest square here. And if I remove it, I'm going to do it quite crudely. I would get this. This is a silver rectangle. 
This won't work in America. You yeah, A4 paper is wrong in America. You have to be in England for this to work. Well, I don't know, somewhere else, other places that have A4 paper, but definitely you can, this can work in England, not necessarily in America. So this is a silver rectangle. Now, if I start removing two larger squares from this, I'll get other silver rectangles ever decreasing. So those are the rectangles that you can have. And as again, there's a whole family of them that you can talk about. But more interesting than the rectangles, of course, are the spirals. Okay, now the spirals are great because the spirals are the things that everybody says appear everywhere. Now, people normally say, oh, the golden ratio is everywhere, isn't it? It's everywhere. Because they're talking there about the spirals. But it's not really the golden spiral that's appearing everywhere. It's all these other ones. We start off with a square and we draw the circle that goes between there and there. Now we create another square, which is a factor smaller by the ratio we're interested in. So we decrease it by a factor of delta, okay, where delta is either the golden ratio or the silver ratio or the bronze ratio, whichever one you're interested in. And we continue our circle. But now we create another square, but we drop by the ratio again and we continue our curve around. And then we go on again. This is gonna have one over delta cubed, but then we go around like this and we create a spiral. If this was the golden ratio, this would be a golden spiral. If this was the silver ratio, it's a silver spiral. If it's a bronze, bronze ratio, it's a bronze spiral, blah, blah, blah. So these are all a family of spirals which are called logarithmic spirals. So what is the, a formula for these spirals? For this particular one, I can compare, you know, I can think of an angle, the angle that I've gone round. So I'm going round like this, if I'm changing angles. I can ask how does the distance from the center change? So the distance from the center I'll call R. Well, you can sort of see that if I, if I were to go around this way, I gain a factor of delta every time I go around a quarter turn. So actually it turns out that R will go like delta two over pi theta. So two over pi of course is, or pi over two is of course a quarter turn in radians. Okay, so this is the formula for this this spiral. But if it's pi over two, why have you put two over pi? Ah, because I need to scale it by the, by the number of radians, okay? And this is part of a larger family, the logarithmic spirals, which look like this, okay? So theta times tan p. So what is p here? p is called the pitch of the particular spiral that you're interested in, and that's very characteristic of it. Imagine I'm coming along this spiral, and I'm going along this direction, call that alpha, and then I could draw a right angle there, and I'll call that p, and that's called the pitch of the spiral. Now each spiral has its own pitch. Okay, so we can write down what the pitches are for the different spirals that we're interested in. Okay. So for the gold, for the golden spiral, the pitch is actually, you can show it's about 17 degrees. You can work that out by comparing these two formally. And just comparing the two, you put in the golden ratio here, you can extract what the pitch is. It works out as about 17 degrees. For the silver, it corresponds, the pitch is about 29 degrees. For the bronze, it's 37 degrees. For n equals four, we get 42 degrees. For n equals five, we get 46 degrees. n equals six, 49 degrees. Remember the Japanese ratio, which we said was root two? That has a pitch of about 12 degrees. People always go on, oh, the golden ratio, it appears everywhere in nature. It does appear in some places in nature. But when they're talking about spirals, it's actually these family of spirals that appears. For example, sometimes you'll hear it said that the Milky Way sees the golden ratio, okay, through its spiral. It's not true. It does indeed see a logarithmic spiral with some average pitch. It's about 12 degrees. So the Milky Way is not a golden spiral. It's much more like a Japanese spiral, actually. There's another one that I quite like is a peregrine falcons, Brady. I love peregrine falcons. They're the fastest creature on the planet. You even get them in England, right? So there's something cool, an animal that we actually get in England. It wins at top trumps as well, you know, predator top trumps that my kids have got. The, the peregrine falcon is one of the winning ones. So I love a peregrine falcon. So the peregrine falcon knows about these ratios as well, right? Imagine you're a peregrine falcon. You're flying around. Now here's your prey. It's sitting here at the center. Now you want to keep your eyes on the prey, but you can't move your eyes. You don't want to stop moving your head around, right? So you're, it, that stays in a fixed position. So you have to keep a fixed angle relative to the prey. So that necessarily means you have to follow one of these logarithmic spirals. The angle it has to look at is actually 40 degrees, which means the pitch of the spiral is about 50 degrees, which is almost one of our metallic spirals. The, I'm gonna call it the N equals six one. So, I mean, I don't know what this is, right? So we've got gold, silver, bronze, copper, nickel, aluminium. But anyway, so it's there, right? It's pretty much there. I mean, it's a good approximation, right? So people talk about seashells, that they, they see the golden spiral. They don't really, they see a whole, all possible pictures. They're, they're seeing these logarithmic spirals. And there's a good reason why, why for example, seashells see these, these log spirals. They have a very nice property, all of them. All of them, the golden one, the silver one, all of them. 
they kind of have what's called a self-similar property. So you go around and then you go around again. And what, when you go around again, you're basically seeing a scaled down version of exactly the same thing. And you keep seeing that as you go round and round and round. And when you think about growth in a biological system, that allows you to grow very efficiently if you follow that pattern of just repeated re repetition, repetition, repetition. You also see these log spirals a lot in architecture and in art. Again, there's probably a good reason for that, and it's related to this self-similar property. So basically, when you look at something, you know, your eye performs visualizations on lots of different scales and then correlates them. When you look at this and you look at it at lots of different scales, you're seeing the same thing. And so that maybe there's some sense in which that, that's good because we're, we're correlating a lot of the same thing on a lot of different scales. We're reducing cognitive load. And... Exactly, and somehow we like that. So this is why this virals appear. Did you know you can get number file t-shirts? There's a whole range of them. Most recently, these very special limited edition gold print ones. They look even better in real life than they do in pictures. And as you can see, they're based on the videos we've been posting this week on number file. If you'd like to check out all the t-shirts, including the gold ones, I'll put a link down in the video description. The gold ones are actually only available for a very limited time because we have to make them to water. But either way, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Repetition, repetition, repetition. 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 Well, big deal. What's so good about that?